They got no increase in net income tax, no increase in sales taxes, net for, and $500 reduction in property taxes. We're going to lower taxes, overall state and local taxes for most Minnesotans. And we're going to money in local government agencies and schools. So, uh, Jay Kudowski, former revenue fund, and called finance commissioner, uh, estimated we would be resulting in a 10% reduction in property taxes paid by uh, average Minnesotans. So, you know, you get a look at the, get a look at the benefits, you got to there's no there's no free lunch. You know, but as I said, sticking with the status quo doesn't get you out of the situation because you still got a $1.1 billion deficit and uh, then a continuation of all the cuts that I think are harmful. I think Minnesotans elected me, elected a new legislature because they want a balanced approach. You know, I, my proposal is about a 2.1 increase in spending over the current biennium. Some of that's because of, it's hard to make an accurate comparison because of some of the one-time fixes that have been used. But that's basically going to uh, raise the deficit on one, one billion and increase in these investments I just described. I consider that a balanced approach. Some people say we had a raise tax of $6 billion to spend it all on all the services that are needed and have been funded for the last decade. Others say no increase at all in spending, and again, I say to them, well, then we're going to cut. I think what Minnesota said, at least to me, as I understand it, was we want a balanced approach. We want you to need investments that are going to benefit us, our children, our grandchildren, the future, and, and I think that's the debate we should have. Thank you, Governor Dayton, for taking my question. Um, the proposed Northern Lights Express passenger rail that's supposed to run from Minneapolis to Duluth uh, is being compared to the Down Easter that runs between Boston and Portland, Maine. It's a subsidized passenger train. Are you willing to commit taxpayer dollars to put this on the tracks, knowing that it most probably will have to be subsidized by tax dollars as it runs? Uh, I said it was not in my mind the proposal last year, much to the dismay of the proponents. And uh, we had kind of the line, well, there's no funding for it in the, the operating budget. And, you know, I, that's the one proposal. Another proposal is uh, high speed rail from the Rochester Airport to the Mayo to the Minneapolis St. Paul Airport so you get the better uh, up, you know, better way for people coming in from out of the state, out of the country to, to get the mail, which is, you may know it's the largest private employer in Minnesota, it's about 26,000 people. Rochester and Olmstead County, because of mail primarily, contribute about $90 million more a year to the state treasury when you get back in the state to uh, local aids, county aids, and school aids. And I'm not saying all that, I just uh, appreciate personally the enormous uh, Priceless gift of, of the Mayo and the Holy Medicine. We have a lot of other places in Minnesota, but that's just the, the economic facts. So that's, that's the one, and then there's the one we're going down in, in Mississippi to uh, River to connect uh, potentially with Chicago. You know, I wish that we got all of them 50 years ago or 30 years ago, and have the day. I've been to China eight times now, and I've been on their high speed trains to connect their cities and allow uh, to reduce the traffic congestion and also you know, provide fast. But you know, as Hillary said, there's no do overs in life. So, you know, we don't have the money right now. The federal government doesn't have the money right now. And good ideas, but you know, I don't see any of that happening in the near future. Yes, sir. Actually, we're going to do it by the way. Okay. I'm going to try to reach above my head. That's okay. Thank you, Governor. Mike McAfee, the update. There's going to be a lot of people lining up to make exceptions to the taxes you want to raise. What kind of case are they going to have to make before you say, OK, we're going to make an exception there? A very compelling case. Because again, for everything you take out, you either have to add more to what's already there, or you have to add something else, or you have to cut spending. We have to exempt medical services. We exempt prescription drugs. Uh, we exempt burial services, although you can only take that once. Uh, <laughs> and some other yeah, areas like that. And you know, again, we exempt clothing purchases of $100 an item, which is, I think, a crude measure, but we're trying to differentiate between essential necessities and items that are perfectly fine to buy. But, and, and, and also deal with the reality that our economy, when the sales tax is instituted, 
Uh, two thirds of our uh, consumer purchases were of goods, and one third were services. Now it's reversed. Now it's one third goods, two thirds services. So when we tax only goods, leaving out food, clothing, and prescription medicine, medical care, uh, we're really, as the experts say, narrowing the base of the sales tax, which is one of the reasons we have now the seventh highest sales tax rate of any state in the nation. If we got the my proposal went down to 5.5%, we would go to the 27th highest sales tax rate in the nation. Same thing with the corporate tax. We go from 9.8% to 8.4%, 14% reduction. We go from 4th to 12th in corporate tax rates. So we're going to broaden the base, lower the rates, and make it fair so everybody pays on the same basis as everyone else. Thanks, Governor. Tom West at the Morrison County Record in Little Falls. As you know, uh, if you tax something, you get less of it. And you're looking at a group of people here that are very concerned that you're going to get less of what we do as a result of your program. And, and uh, we believe, for the most part, that we are the only goose gatherers left out there. It's not radio, it's not TV, it's the print media. And, we are the ones that cover local government and state government. And we are wondering why you would think it would be a good idea to have less information about government and what government is up to. Okay. I don't think it's a good idea to tax anybody from that standpoint. I mean, taxing any business raises the cost of its product or whatever it has a, you know, an effect that the Congress can describe it. And as they said, corporate tax rate is safe. You know, we tax, you know, property used to be a measure of wealth. And most wealth now is not in property. So, I mean, you, you basically start throwing out parts of our tax code to find a good economic justification for doing so. And the question then is, what's left? And is that the kind of state we want? You know, we rank 15th down total state local taxes. We rank 25th among the states in expenditures, the, the gap being we rank at the bottom of federal funds of the states. So, you know, we got from uh, 8th to 20th in per pupil K-12 education expenditures over the last decade. So, you know, we keep eliminating or not including other things in taxes and moving over to the 30th. Well, I graduated from grade school and high school, and so, you know, this isn't about my concern. Uh, most of us will, you know, kind of coast on Minnesota that's already been established, but our kids and grandkids have everything at stake in this. You know, and, and, and not only do they have a stake in their own success, but they have a success in, they have a stake in the success of all the other kids around them. And people say, well, all my social security media program when I retire, and I say, well, it depends. It depends on how well the U.S. economy is doing. If 95% of our citizens in the next two generations are Productively employed or running their own businesses, paying taxes, we'll make it. Demographics are tight, we'll make it. But if only 85% of them are working, 10% of them are unemployed, and 5% of them are in prison, we're in an economic crisis in this country that we haven't seen before. So this is about the big picture. And I realize everybody probably looks at it from their own standpoint how does it affect me, how does it affect my family, how does it affect my business. And my job is to take that into account, but also look at the big picture. And again, I say, you know, if it's a status quo, it's all the problem, you know, I wouldn't be talking about any of this today, but it doesn't. So the question is, if my, my approach to solving the problem is, is, is not desirable, then what's a better alternative? 